All right, I think this is the one. Okay, so you got to come into the come, yeah. Greg, into the frame. All right, hello, everyone, and welcome to the. Uh, hopefully, this is working. Let me know in the chat if you can hear us, because uh, we're gonna see how it works. Uh, usually, I'm gonna wait a little bit. Uh, you guys are bad at designing. Talia's a joke. Haha, <laughs> not a question. You spelled Talia wrong. Yeah. No, that's correct. Oh, it looked like double L from here. No, no, no. That one's correct. Um, why is it so dark? Uh, because uh, Greg and I are so incredibly pale that if uh, we turn on the light, you lose us immediately. I'm it becomes pale. impossible to see. I'm trying to. I'm, a, you know, I'm a, trying to. I'm trying not to take tan. all the paleness for myself. Okay. Uh, so, all right. So people can hear us. So we're good to go. Part Native American man. <clears throat> Hey everyone, this is the uh, Thursday design stream that we do every week, uh, where you get to know different designers from around the company, you get to meet them, hang out for a little bit, we play a game, but today is not that day. For those of you who uh, have been a part of the stream for a little bit of a while now, you know that every month we have a Q&A with Design Dad himself, Greg, <laughs> Greg Ghostcrawler Street, uh, and so that's what we're going to be doing uh, with you guys here today. So Greg... Uh, for those of uh, people out there who don't know, why don't you tell them a little bit about yourself, what you do here, things they can expect. I am head of design for League of Legends at Riot Games. Um, I lead a really large team that does this lots game. and lots of different things from Dynamic Q to launching Talia. Yeah. So champions, balance, Dynamic Q, as you said, uh, lots of other things, crafting, all sorts of crazy shenanigans that end up in the game uh, he gets to uh, help make decisions on. So uh, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to do some Q&A. So if you want to ask a question, go ahead and drop it in the chat. Uh, at League of Legends, because we're not League Community anymore. We're League of Legends on the stream. Grown up. Yeah, we've grown up. At League of Legends. Uh, and then go ahead and ask a question. And we will be able to read it there. So, <laughs> Greg, what the hell happened? This used to be a WoW stream. <laughs> what, what, what's going on, buddy? Uh, I leveled up. I, I don't know. Yeah, I know. We changed. We got him over here now. So let's see. Uh, all right. We, we have, uh, we have, uh, we have two questions as we're waiting for questions as people are kind of checking up on things. Uh, Math, no, your top lane Iceborne Bard is not good, even <laughs> if you're 4-0 with it. I refuse. I was streaming with uh, Smash Gizmo last night. Okay, he okay. was up in the chat. He was like, yo, this bard build, it's the next bard build. I'm like, no, I can't, I can't I can't believe it. I refuse to believe it. We need more light. Very dark. Uh, we need a little more light on you. Very dark. I mean, I get, is there... I don't know how this works. If Chris, I trust Kristen because she's moderating. If she says we need more light, we'll get more light. She'll come um, fix it for us because she's the best. Yeah. Uh, Samora, you didn't ask it the regular way, but uh, I need to know the correct pronunciation for Talia. It's Talia. I, I thought it was Talia during uh, development. We actually it, debated that a lot as we inserted and removed vowels to figure out the right way to have players pronounce it, but that's the one we use now. Yeah, it's Talia, as far as I'm aware. You can call it what you want. I think people will get it. Yeah. All right. So let's see. I guess we're, you know, this is kind of happens at the beginning. There's a, there's a lot of things uh, we're, we're waiting for. Sure. for Are there plans coming. to make every point and click ability a skill shot eventually? Yes. No. Yeah, I was like, was like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> no, that's not in the script at all. That's no. We what? like skill shots, maybe a little too much. Where was that one? Oh, it was way up at the top. Oh, it's way it up at the top. The at League of Legends. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. See, you guys got to do at League of Legends so we can find them. It'll be easy. Yeah, Kittle's P to top onto that. I mean, Greg hit it right. We skill shots are cool, but uh, I mean, as you can tell with even some of our more recent uh, reworks, right? It's like. Uh, Poppy has a point-and-click ability in her tackle. Um, Gangplank has a point-and-click ability in his Q. Point-and-click abilities are important. I think Love we're getting thing. more light as we speak. Uh, too much light! Too much oh light! Oh, no! Down. That one down. There you okay. Go. You good? Thank you. All right. Hey, hooray, we did it. We have more light. So that's the thing. Um, scripted confirmed. Yeah, scripted confirmed. Who, yeah, comes, like, up, who comes up with the names for the champions? Um... So the group of writers working on a particular champion come up with the name. Often the writer is the one to suggest the name, but it doesn't have to be the writer. It could come from anywhere. Um, in the case of uh, Talia, it was the writer who who uh, first pitched those names. Yeah, there's usually like a big list of them, right? We usually yeah, send yeah. Out yeah. We had email. an email of like, hey, do you guys like this or this? And someone would be like, no, that sounds like something else. Players will think of the wrong thing, and and we ended up with that. Yeah. Um. Uh. Was release Aurelian Soul the most OP champion on release? Who, if not him? Yes. Just, 
yes. I this is a thing that I I am always talking about because everyone's like, why are you nerfing Aurelian Soul? No one plays him. I'm like, because he's the he's just the strongest champion we've ever made. Uh, like in a, in a pure win rate perspective, he released at the highest win rate previously. When I started, I don't know if you knew this. When I started, it was Zyra. Released, I knew it was Zyra. Released at Aurelian Soul beat up Zyra. Yeah, released released at about a sixty percent win rate. Uh, and then the Juggernaut Skarner rework was at, like, 59. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Um, Aurelian Soul capped out uh, before his first nerf at 65. 65. Nice. Yeah, so two-thirds thir- two of your games. And that was the thing, too, is, like, that was week one Aurelian Soul. That's like It was, like, usually experienced they players. Usually start low and go Yeah, up yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. the fact that he started at that was, like, insane. That was crazy. Um, but, yeah, Aurelian Soul is just... Uh, and it's weird because he doesn't have a lot of like the big moments when you're like, oh, I totally just lost to Aurelian Soul than, that you might feel with some other champions uh, who are really, really strong. But uh, So that's why it might not feel that way, but that's the thing. Um, uh, El Flaming Taco asks at League of Legends, what would you say has been your most challenging work at Riot? What do you think? That's I mean, a hell of a question. Wow. Um... I mean, there's a lot of ways Hans said. There's, like, particular features on League. There's, like, you know, reorganizations of the department and stuff like that, which probably are much less interesting to players. I right, mean, but I think, like... Dynamic Q has certainly been a monstrous challenge that we're still not out of the woods with yet. Yeah. Um, after following that, I'd probably say the, the Summoner's Rift update and the League client, which you guys are starting to see now. It's, it's out on... on uh, the Alpha. Alpha now. The yeah. Alpha is starting. Um, so, well, no, I'm, I'm interested to know, like, for you, what you personally felt like was the most challenging thing so far, even if it wasn't, like, shipping a feature or something. Um. Give us, give us that sweet insight. There were, I'm trying to say this in a way that doesn't sound like I'm taking all the credit for it. Right. I think when I started on League of Legends, the, the team was still run a little bit more as kind of a startup, where... Someone would say, like, hey, I have an idea to, to, you know, change this champion. I'm just going to go in and make some changes. Um, That was kind of the worst case scenario. The best case scenario was someone to turn around their desk and be like, hey, I'm thinking of making some changes. Should we do this? Yeah. Um, It wasn't very deliberate. There wasn't much of a (laughs) process to decide, like, what is our prioritization of what do we work on? Um, And it all feels a lot more deliberate now. I think, uh, you know... I think it, it feels like a really well-oiled machine. The team is all really, really clicking. It's a big team. I'm not just talking about design. I'm talking about yeah. League of Legends as a whole development community, which is, you know, hundreds of people. Um, and it feels really good now. And I think it was a challenge getting from point A to point B without having people on the team feel like, you know, they were losing their agency or we were getting too big or there was too much process. But some of that is just the reality. When you have a really large team, you can't operate like a team of 26 people anymore. Yeah, so I'm seeing some questions about uh, Trinity Force. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, handle one of those. So, uh, Roth, Roth, uh, we'll just pick yours out. At League of Legends, why would you even think of changing the Holy Trinity Force? The Zeal has been a component of it for over half a decade. Uh, so, there are, I mean, Trinity Force is, is definitely, like, an item that is tied to the community's, like, understanding of League, right? It's like... It's, uh, for even from way back in the day before we had all these big ticket items, it was the most expensive item. It was the coolest thing, right? Uh, but we, you know, through the years, we've had to ask ourselves a lot of hard questions. Like, what purpose does it actually serve, you know, because we have things like Infinity Edge and Rabadon's Death Cap that are like, these are your big ticket items for this style. And even though Ginsu's Rage Blade isn't the absolute strongest item right now, that's also supposed to say, hey, this is your kind of eye edge or your death cap for on hit builds. Like, that's what that will do. Um, and Trinity Force is supposed to be for these fighters, kind of bruisery champions who want uh, to spike really 